well a lot of tired bodies and hurt bodies after the game or during the game even in Amsterdam. So can you bring us up to date on the injury situations? Yeah, just one missing from the squad really. Nathan Collins, ankle ligaments is missing. Um, and um, every, the squad otherwise is, is the same. And are there players that, that, are, that you would consider doubtful in terms of fitness and recovery? Evan Ferguson, for example. Um, we'll see today, uh, but I think I think Evan is seems to be okay, and um, you know he you know he seems to be okay and will be, will be included in the squad. And um, how will you motivate the players for this game? Because it obviously it was very disappointing the other night, and um, it, it comes at the end of a disappointing campaign. Yeah, no, I think. Uh, Listen, we, we you know we played Holland the other night, one of the best teams in Europe, and um, it was a you know a, people can have their own opinions on it, and, and uh, but I thought it was a, a good game of football. I think Holland were the better team. There's no question about that. But we uh, you know we, we, we fought till the end of that game. We played a lot of good football. We didn't create enough. You know that. Um, and, and we defended for our lives when we needed to, and um, so you know it wasn't like we lost four one to Wales or lost got hammered in Cyprus or Macedonia didn't It was a tight game with Holland that we lost one 0 and deserved to lose. So it was it was it was one of those games. So I think it's um, it's uh, you know a bit of perspective on that you know. I take it that James will be involved. Will he really start? Will he captain the side? James, who James will start tomorrow. You know, James will start tomorrow for sure. And can you talk to me about James? I know he's sitting next to you, but about James and his contribution over what will now be 103 caps. Yeah, like obviously uh, longevity in his career. Obviously, again, I had the pleasure of giving James his debut when he when he was a young player at Derry City, and. He was, uh, you know, had tremendous determination, and he went on to to uh, to play for Sunderland and and the variety of clubs that he played for. And he a huge, huge uh, fortitude, and mental strength, and the ability to great levels of skill as a left winger, great levels of skill, very, very, uh, very direct and high, like a, a high number of assists and goals for a winger, and always worked tirelessly for the team. Then had to adapt in his career as some people then they fade away from you know fade away from top level football because age catches up. But then he adapted and became a left back or a left wing back, and you have to the adapt the ability to adapt is um, is uh, you know was was um, was terrific really, and it showed his quality in that regard, and uh, he deserves huge credit for the career he's had. Like, one hundred three caps is, is something special. But just finally for me, like one of the criticisms perhaps level at you is maybe that you brought in too many young players too soon, um, someone of James' experience and ability. Is it, is it too soon for him to be hanging up his boots? Um, no, that's a decision for James. I wouldn't try and influence that, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and influence that, you know. So he can, he can you know, that all, all those decisions that James is in control of his own destiny and he's still, you know, still playing professional football. And, He's hoping to get promoted this year, and I think um, so. He he will he will make that decision himself. I'm sure. Joe, please. Would you answer things? Good yourself. Uh, for him, thanks. Uh, <coughs> what to think about tomorrow night and the build up to it, and as you've been reflecting, can you just share with us a little bit about what um, it's meant to you or means to you playing for your country? Oh look, I've never had the fact that look, it means everything. Um, the the Ireland jersey. Along with their their city jersey, you know, it's a jersey that means more to me than anything else ever will. Uh, and tomorrow night, for the last time, you know, I'll, I'll pull it on. And you know, when I say when I, when I say that out loud, it's obviously you know it's a bit uh, it's a bit sad that that's going to be the case. But look, tomorrow night when I pull it on, I'll do what I've done 102 times before, and I'll. Try and uh, 
do it with as much pride and as much justice uh, as possible because there's like I said there's no there's no more special feeling than upon on the the green jersey and representing the country. You've been through a lot with this team over the years. Um, first of all, can you just give us some of, of the best times, the highlights, and also uh, how do you feel the position of Irish football is naturally in the field? Well, the best times, um, not to sound too cliche, but it's a pawn on that jersey every time is as special as, as, the, as the first. And, you know, I've been very fortunate, you know, they have some incredible moments in that jersey. Um, you know, I've got they play at two major tournaments and you know, unless you're there it's very hard to put that into words and des describe it to people. Um, because, you know, words don't do it justice and I, some people never get the experience that not able to do that uh, twice. So look I've had incredible, incredible highs in uh, the Iron Jersey, a couple of lows, obviously they I would have loved to play the World Cup and the Denmark game and you know that's something that I always always hurt but now look I've gotten absolutely no regrets. And um, just one for Stephen for you. Um, Stephen look we don't know what's gonna happen after tomorrow night. Um on a point of reflection for yourself um after this campaign and uh, after your time so far um how do you feel the strength of Irish football is <coughs> now and what's your impact being upon it up to this point? Well I think listen first of all you know I I saw clarification before this window in regard to my own position, and you know, if that wasn't the case, I would have, I would have uh, said, you know, wish, I would have made that clear earlier in the week. Um, but from my point of view, obviously the decision has been made next week. You know, the kind of whatever. But if it is my last game, so be it. Like if I, you know, I. I wish if there if there is a new manager to follow me in that regard, I wish him well. And I think uh, if uh, you know if that if that is the case, and and they make that decision, I don't know what decision be made. But regardless of what decision is made, and if there is um, a new manager to come in after me, um, I will, I will absolutely wish him well and wish the team well moving forward. And I'll always support Ireland. So from that point of view, that's. That's the way I view it. Gavin, please. Uh, hi, Stephen. Uh, you mentioned perspective there. Have you felt that that's been lacking in the criticism? No, the no, listen, I've noticed. <laughs> I think, listen, it's it's uh, it's a game against New Zealand tomorrow. Um, you know, I know <laughs> I won't get criticised for mentioning it. Like, I just asked Cree there, and how many's how many's how many's gone in the ticket office? How many's gone tomorrow? She said it's up to forty-one thousand. Like, there's no one in Europe getting getting that for. You know, it's not many countries in Europe getting that good of crowds for some of the less lesser nations uh, that we're getting. And it's it's a credit to the team, it's a credit to the players that they really, uh, you know, okay, results went up and down, but certainly they they uh, they identify with the players and raise great identification with the team. With the support there, which is fantastic, and um, I think um, New Zealand tomorrow actually they're quite an open, expansive team. Four three three. They really play through the towards uh, a couple of players who Stanvich playing in in the Champions League, Chris Wood playing the Premier League up front. So they're actually good football team. Watch them and um, four three three. Make the pitch big and and try and play. And um, so it's it's a good game tomorrow. Obviously, we'll make changes. Uh, we'll make some changes from the other night. Cause some people, um, for different reasons, you know, for for different reasons, fresh it up and to, you know, for some people to play as well. So um, so that's how we view it. We will try and finish on on a strong note. Finish the season on a strong note, and um, that's that's what we want to do. And I think um, the Irish support has been amazing. Home and away, we've had big crowds in for the Gibraltar, big crowd in Holland, you know, and all, all of the games, packed stadiums for all the friendlies, friendlies with Latvia and matches with Gibraltar, full houses or not full, close to full houses. So, and um, it's been great support, and I don't know, you know, obviously the, it's not easy midweek for people living all over Ireland and from abroad getting in and on a Tuesday. So I don't know if we'll get that crowd tomorrow, but, but there's forty-one thousand sold. 
and that's that, that that's testament to the team and and uh, fair play. And just one for James. Uh, congratulations on your Irish career. Thank you. Maybe just tell us about the reasons why you're making the decision to, to step away. Okay. Um, I'll be quite honest with you. Uh, it's not because uh, of, of my body, or a uh, or I feel I've got the my ball is diminished. I still feel as fat as ever. Uh, I still believe that I'm the the, pe the best person for the role. You know, um, I've never doubted myself in that sense. You know, I played 40, 46 games with the 46 games in the championship last season, 45 in the start. Uh, I was, a baldy wise, I was second for full backs and goals and assists and for most successful tackles in the whole in the whole the whole league number one. So, but look, there's there's other factors, and I've got personal reasons, and I've got my own reasons why um, I'm stepping away. And I feel like I feel like now is the right time. I feel like now is the right time to step aside. Uh, let others come through. I've had my time. I've no no regrets, and I feel that you know, um, for me now is the perfect time to to step away. I'll be. Yeah, I've got no, no regrets about that. It's when the I, I just sort of remember, uh, you know, it's not many players get out, go out on their own terms like James Dillon and the 103. I remember seeing you in the showgrounds uh, in the under 18 team and you came into that team at Derry, very excited, um, and um, came into the team where we had, we sort of had a rule when we went to the first division that time that everyone had to be from within six miles of the the whole team was running six miles to sea. Pretty strong, wasn't it? That that period. Yeah, that was obviously that was that was one of the most special times in, in, in my career because it was we were all young and it was we were we were all mates. So we, it was basically playing playing football with your mates. We would go out on the Friday and put teams away for fun, and then we would. Quite that night. So he wasn't. <laughs> the manager know about those nights, like. Does not. Um, <laughs> nah, that was that was obviously a special time. We like I said, we, it was it was a local team. We were all all best mates. We were having the time of our lives, you know, playing so much freedom, which the manager gave us, um, and we got promoted, and we, and we were probably very. Very unfortunate, not the not the well, one the league this well, season. Because we sold you, that's why we sold it in the August window. But I think uh, they have too late to replace you. But the you know to go on and get 103 caps, then you know, is uh, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. It's when the last Stephen, um, regardless of the decision next week, uh, yeah, is it important now to draw a line under the Euro campaign? Use tournaments game to build momentum, start momentum, get that winner mentality back and just look to the future and just use what you've learned for the last three years to go and just now emerge as a team and uh, you know, towards that World Cup. Yeah, you know, I think there will be changes tomorrow night and I think obviously because uh, that, that in international football that's part of it when you've got friendly games and you've got to utilise your squad and people give that commitment travelling uh, you know, travelling around Europe um, for five camps uh, a year, and you give the give the commitment and and uh, and every day in training. So sometimes you've got to award that as well. And um, so I think there will be some changes tomorrow night, but we obviously we want um, a strong performance uh, against New Zealand, and um, you know we've got to uh, and and fin try and finish the season on a high. That's what we would like. Just a quick one for James. Um, congratulations, Silver Thank career you. in the green, and um, much appreciated. Um, you, you're still fit, you're still strong, you're still playing professional football, as Stephen said. Have you pondered too much about your future after football? Are you going to go towards coaching, punditry, or even dabble in politics? <sighs> politics, absolutely not. Um, Staying well, well there, that. Um, no, uh, I don't. Uh, thank too much uh, for what's next. Like I said, I feel I feel grand. I've no uh, plans to hang up the the boots any, anytime soon. Um, what I'm doing now after Tuesday, I'm going to I'm going to save for Tuesday, and then um, I promised my wife and kids because I've never had a 
a summer off in a long time, so we're gonna we're gonna go book Florida, go away for a month, and and uh, enjoy the, enjoy Disneyland. So looking forward to that. Hollywood might be in the in the future then. Not both. We'll, we'll we'll see. I'm I'm not the I'm not the best actor in the world, but we'll see. Who knows? Steve, Steve, you mentioned it comes to Martin Nielsen Wales. Um, no, just, I didn't mean even. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, the three previous managers to Peter Wales, Cyprus and Macedonia. And they could add one or two of mine onto that as well. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, fair enough. But you, you, the whole point of having a bit of perspective um, about how tough this group was and how he's couldn't get to the. You just wanted them to peak in this, in this last year, but because of the opposition, it just hasn't been possible. Is that a fair comment? Listen, I don't, I don't want to make excuses now, you know, because that's why any time you answer questions, it sounds like that. But no, I think uh, the, um, yeah, it, it's been, we knew at the time it's a phenomenally tough group. Um, I've already said, um, I think France is the best team in the world. Like, uh, and we, you know, we obviously weren't, uh, we, did, we didn't beat Greece, which, I said I've taken respons I take responsibility for and um, know they're a very good team. I must say they're a very good team, but um, t tough games, uh, tough learning curve for everyone. Obviously, a, a lot of close games, um, a lot of very close games, but not quite enough in in this campaign. But I don't think, you know, it was. I think any. A lot of Irish teams, even the best teams, would have found it difficult to qualify over this group. You know, the kind of way because it was a, a very tough group at that top two. But, um, but listen, um, that that that's where it is. Like we we didn't we didn't we didn't uh, you know we didn't win enough games for sure. There's a there's a bravery of the way he's played in in Amsterdam and stuff like that. But it can can can, can that sell? Eight results against the top teams because that are needed, like eight results in a place like Amsterdam or Paris. Um, it's slightly different in Paris, but yeah, I think. Um, yeah, no, I, I do, I do think we can just do a, continue to improve and do a lot of aspects of it better. Um, okay, it's an argument for slightly bit more compact. Um, but you know more compact. But you're you're conceding. Um, you're letting the other team dominate possession and accept. You'll only have twenty five percent of possession and hope you or twenty twenty five percent of possession and hope that you you do something on the break and just or a set play. You know what I mean? That's that's um, you now. Uh, admittedly, we didn't score, so you can. Uh, although the freest frame of Adam. Uh, Ironically, there's a photograph we have there in freeze frame of Adam Eda. Is that if he's offside, it's by an absolute millimetre. You know what I mean? It's by an absolute millimetre. But that, that's the you know, if you're offside, you're offside. But if he's offside, it's by a millimetre for that, for that goal. But I think it's. Um, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Where was I? Yeah, I was just wondering how long does it take for Ireland to get up to the level? Well, I, I don't, I don't, I, oh, but the Dutch and the France. I'm not, yeah, I, it's not just to. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying you don't have to modify your style and defensively be better. Um, but listen, we we showed in Dublin, particularly with, with the aggressive press that we created, the ability to create chances from that, and you know we just weren't ruthless enough to take that second chance. Alan Brown won the ball three times in that match on the edge of the Dutch box, do you know what I mean, nearly, and um, we just weren't ruthless enough to finish that, finish those opportunities that we should have, you know, yeah, we got we got a goal from the penalty, so, from from it, so, that was, that was, uh, that was it, um, but, uh, over there, they uh, playing, uh, playing Holland away, you know, obviously I've spoken about it already, it's a difficult game, and, you are to win over there or to get a result over there. You know, like your goalkeeper is going to have to play well, and you and you will be. They will have chances, uh, but and that did happen the other night. Um, but I thought our ability to play out from the back is good. Our ability to play through midfield is good. 
equal possession stats in the in we'd more we'd more possession in Holland in the in the game in Dublin and the other night it was fifty five forty five Holland. So but just it's it's uh when we got to when we broke the press then we needed to show more cutting edge then and we didn't the other night, you know, we didn't didn't create enough from some of the positions that we ended up getting into. Um, and that was that was a little bit frustrating on the night but um but we're capable of that for sure. I think capable of improving that aspect of things. And obviously the first goal is not when you want you know, we we overcommitted in that and didn't get enough cover. And that was uh, we should swing earlier and we should we should get enough cover on the first goal. And um that's that's something that we got punished for. They do punish you. Um the finishes that we've seen at the top level, Beg Horse finish, even though it he's he's true one on one it's from the widest of angles and you still don't think he'll score from there um but he's put it in the top corner and it's like when we play France away like not really got any chances at that period and then it comes from tuna me from twenty five yards and he and he sticks it in the top corner. So sometimes when <laughs> uh when when you're playing the top teams they just show that absolute quality against you sometimes and um um and 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 they did those finishes um, illustrate that. Sean, please. Uh, Stephen, just going back to Gavin's first question. I know it was a while ago. Just about the results of the three managers that you mentioned. So, well, does some have been more important to the nerves? Uh, in your time, have you felt you've been afforded? Some of what? Sorry. Some have been in punditry more prominently than others. For example, Brian has been pundit. Martin O'Neill has been pundit. Mick hasn't really been a pundit. Do you feel you've been afforded enough respect for your predecessors? Uh, to be honest with you, it's not something I really want to get into now. You know, I don't think I don't. I think it can be. You know, I think uh, it's not, that, that's not something I really want to get into today. Tomorrow's tomorrow's a big game for James McLean in New Zealand. Big game for the whole team to try and uh, win the game. You know. It's been mentioned. Could be our last game. Myself, Keith Andrews, John O'Shea, Dean Kiley, um, Stephen Rice, and all the background team. We, we, you know, we've been brilliant behind the scenes. Um, I think uh, criticism from Brian Kerr, you know, or, or anyone else. Uh, you know, it's not something I really want to get into uh, here and now and now. You know, and uh, I think. Yeah, I understand the question and so forth, but I think today is probably not the day for that, I think. Just on tomorrow, uh, I think we'll probably take Andy Moore and we'll make his debut. Oh, we, we, he, he, we'll see on that. He's in the squad and we, we, we'll see about that. And yeah. just had you intended to play in the league or did the game just go a certain way or involve him? How do you mean? In, in Holland, <coughs> was the intention to play him at some point was he in your game plan or did it just yeah Andy was an important part of the squad like he's been named in we players with five scans the other night last week with the players in different positions Andy was called into the, in, into the into the squad he's a versatile player and he's someone who deserves to be um, I heard it said that it's inexcusable that I've called him in uh, to the to the senior squad I think I'll tell you what's inexcusable the fact that no one, not many players were progressing for eight, for eight years like in, through, through the Irish system. Now we have a system that's aligned from under 15 right to the 21s where the, all the, all the, all the uh, managers are working together to promote the ultimate goal of getting players in, into the senior international team. And we've seen that. Andy is uh, um, a really good prospect that we want to progress uh, if it's not me for, for the next manager, uh, if it's not me uh, at this campaign, after this campaign, if it isn't me, and I think uh, he's, he was in the senior squad because he's the next best player to come in in that position. He was rewarded for his good performances, you know? He's rewarded for his good performances, and okay, did, other players were preferred on the night, before. you don't know what's going to happen in the game, and you react and you, you make decisions based on that, but he was a good option as a as a... As a an attacking number eight or as someone who could possibly play wider off the left as well he was a good option for us and um as he as he will be tomorrow you know so he certainly uh he's in he's in because he's the next best player at the moment 
into the squad and on 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 merit and you have to be reward as a young player you have to be sort of re rewarded with that and um you know so that that that's that's how, how i view that Dan, please james uh, congrats um, Thanks, Dan. i just kind of get one of your opinion on where this group is at at the moment as you sort of step away I and mean, i'm thinking you're competitive with debut for Ireland was in a major tournament you would have walked into a dressing room with the players that played in the world cup mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now when you step away, there's going to be <coughs> very little experience like that around the camp. I mean, where do you see this group at and their potential? Because obviously, it seems it feels quite low at the moment after the results this year. Yeah, look, with potential, like there's no there's no doubting, there's so much potential there, and as each passing year goes, uh, they're going they're going to get experience at, at this level. Um, good and bad and you know they're going to take that forward but this group of lads are the future of Irish football like there's no getting away from that this squad now is the future and they will get better with experience and the ball is certain, certainly there and I, I believe I'm, I'm actually very confident that this this group of players will reach major tournaments and sooner the better uh, hopefully so no, but I've no doubt in their ability and the more they get experienced, the, the better they're going to get and I believe they can deliver really good times for uh, for this country going forward. I appreciate it's a very broad question, but why do you think it's been a struggle in the last this campaign and just to, to get over that time? The, this campaign, the pretty obvious one is there's two better, we, there's two better teams, uh, you could argue Greece obviously they beat us home and away, so you could argue they're they're better. But we got France and France and Holland, and it was always going to be a major task. If anybody but thinks that uh, you know we're better in, in France and Holland, and then they're deluded because the reality is we ain't. And without getting too much into it, that's probably a a, a domestic thing, uh, if I'm being honest, because you look at our domestic league. Compared to theirs, you look at the head start they have from from no age. We top in this country. In a, in a sense, you know, we need more funding. And I I, I was I heard I heard something the other day, and I'm, look, I'm not a hundred percent sure, and I don't mean no much to much about it. But I heard the funding again towards the the FA is going to be cut by fifty percent again. So you know you're. You're competing with your your, your hand type and your back. We we need a strong domestic league, and that definitely hampers the the national team. Like there's no there's no getting away from that. Neil, please. Damn, I'm never gonna end if you don't get around there, Neil, please. Stephen, so one of the hallmarks of your Dundalk team 2016 is we have few players you use. Um, you know, it didn't change the team that much. I think you've had 25 different starters in this in eight games even though there's two ever presence. How much of that is just different circumstances? I appreciate injuries playing their part, double headers and all that, but is that more players than I do need would have liked to use? Yeah, you know it is true that a lot of teams uh, you do you do know our successful teams are based on the element of continuity. Um, but international football is not like club football at all because from window to window and then you and typically that people say you blooded too many young players. Sometimes you, you you bring players on. They show great promise. They look like they're going to do well. They're doing well at the club, and then injuries really injuries are a big factor in in their careers, and uh, they can rule them out for long periods, and then they struggle to find that rhythm getting back, and that that can be an issue as well. Um, and form form at club level. Because we're not, we're, we don't have established players playing every week. At that, you know, we're going to play former club level. Some players can just find themselves out of the team at their club, and I know people say we well, should pick them anyway. You're showing you're inconsistent. Cause, but if fellas aren't playing for a couple of months, it's hard then just to commit to international football and play. And you can see that. And then sometimes other players are at the top of their top of their game. So it, it's just different at times, and that's than club football. So it's just. Um, but ideally, you're right. Like a, you're right. Ideally, there would be more continuity uh, in the in that in the, in the perfect situation, perfect situation. And that that's why clubs like teams like France are the best, as well. Because not because they have they have a huge 
pool of depth, but they do have a lot of continuity with their with their starting eleven. You know, and that, that helps. Them. Right. Yeah, just one for, for James. I fully expect that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just and, and I would <laughs> run out of time, but I would be walking towards that. Mm. That would be you know the picture towards that, and that's what I would I would see. Do you know what I mean? In relation to that, like, um, like say with, with a back four, we can say you don't have a back four, but Chidozi would play on wide on the right. Mikey Johnson hasn't played in a minute at club level a bit, so they're the two best wingers. So it's difficult then, so you've, we've got these centre backs, so we have the adaptability. And Liam Scales obviously gives the natural left foot. Andrew Obamadelli is a terrific talent as well coming through, yeah, but hasn't obviously not played football recently. So uh, we do have we do have that uh, we do have that picture that whether it be three five two two or three four three. Yeah, and the players we have suit that at the moment um, until we produce more wide players um, and um, natural wingers and, and have a depth because you can't then have a system and then one player gets injured and then you've got to throw it out the door based on whether one player is fit or not. Do you know kind of way? And so you, you have to have sort of depth in positions if you're going to build that. And that's, that, that's and, and that was a contradiction because I played it back forward against Greece. Um, so uh, you know, so that I can't, you know, I contradicted myself in the, in the whole match, but I think, um, but definitely that because we did have, um, Chidozi available in that one, but so that that that's what I, w I would see that you do just the best teams obviously have an element of continuity in it, and it, you're sort of working towards that, and um, and it's not like people say three years, but it's ten games a year sort of situation, so. And it's not like so. It's not like it sounds like an enormity of a time, but um, and but that's that's the reality. But success, you know, well, you know, success is important, and everyone wants to qualify for tournaments, and we all want that. And you know, and if you don't, sometimes that's, you know, they're not going to wait for you. People are not going to wait for you, and I, I get that as well. You know, I get that as well. Uh, patience, you know, that's that's a, that is a virtue. So that's I understand that. Anything, please. Yeah. James, except that Steve is the manager who will manage to next week, the decision is made, so I'm expecting or respecting that. But if a change is made, do you think it's important that the manager of the Irish team is Irish? Um, well, I don't, I don't know that's a fair question now when I'm still in the job, you know, to, to, to speak about the next manager, you know that kind of way? I don't think that's a fair question. Brendan? You know, but no. if, if Eggman's asked another one, maybe, I don't know. No, it's okay. It's you know, I don't think that, that's fair, you know that kind of way? Decisions not been made yet, you know. Brendan? Um, just to go on from Ned's point, the James, um, Danny Lafferty said you should be a boxer in your next career. Um, can I ask you two quick questions that came on loudly? <coughs> when you were knocking about tro Trojans when you were a kid, what was your what was your objective? Was it just to get on the team? Or did you <coughs> did you believe that you could make something of yourself? No. Like my self belief is probably I would say my my bigger attribute, my 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 mindset. Um it actually <laughs> it actually insults it insults me in a way because I see some of the comments and I'm just like, Oh, you've never the most gifted and he was, you know, uh, this and that like listen, you, that actually that actually insults me because you you, you have to have a ball, you, you just you don't go on to play 12 years in England, I've got 150 Premier League games, 103 international cap classes tomorrow night, so, you know, you have to have a ball day. Next day they say, oh yeah, he's great work ethic and this and that, yeah, but, you know, oh, he's a good runner, but go grab Mo far off the streets and stick him in and, you know, it's, it's just not, you have to have a ball day to go with it. So it actually, it act, when I read comments like that, it does it. Ins, it insults me. me, me I look, maybe when I, when I when I retire, I probably get more recognition for my actual football on the ball day than, than I do now. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Very short question, um, James. What are you most proud of? Could be on or off the field uh, over the last twenty years. Um, all the things that you've achieved. Is there anything for you that stands out? To, that's what I'm most proud of. <sighs> that I made a successful career in a very, very, very hard industry. Um, 
and the longevity uh, in, in doing that. Um, so yeah, look, um, absolutely, that, that's of course that's me, me part of the achievement that I've had such longevity at a, a very high level and a very high, uh, a very hard industry, and I've been able to um, give my my children and my family a good future uh, off the back of that. So yeah, I'm absolutely very very proud of that. Thanks, James. Wish you luck. Thank you. Final question for Philip. Two questions, Kieran, for me. Thank you. Uh, James, congratulations. Thanks, Paul. It was a privilege to cover most of your matches. Um, Vienna stands out and Cardiff um, stands out. You, you had a lot of ability, you still have. Thank um, you. Just a word, if I may, and you're good at these things, a quick bullet point. You played on a trap, you played on an O'Neill, you played on a McCarthy, and you played on a Stephen Kenny for Ireland. Sentence each on their qualities. Sentence yeah. each on their qualities. Uh, they're all. Oh, obviously all, all different, but the one thing that I would I would say they've all got in common is they're they were all great men. They were all I've had a good relationship with each and every one of them and uh, their passion for the game, you know, you can see how much it, it, it meant to each each and every one of them and if I ever do uh go into coaching, you know, um which it's it's not on the agenda, you know, I've seen so many great great qualities of, of all four of them and I would like to take obviously bits and bobs uh into my own manager career if it ever one day comes. So um no look I wanna one thing I, I do wanna Say why I'm sat here, as I want to thank each and each and every one. Uh, I think it would be unfair to compare them and their strengths and weaknesses, but I want to just say uh, a massive thank you to each and one, each and every one of them because um, you know they they chose me and they put faith in me and uh, that's something that I that I hold dearly. So thanks. Team player at the end, and just finally, Stephen, just on James, you said he's going to play tomorrow. Surely you're going to lead the team out with the armband. The, yeah, uh, well, I, I haven't decided that, but certainly, uh, and it's not a question, but I think the uh, James has had, um, you know, an amazing journey and the things he's had to contend with on and off the pitch, he showed incredible fortitude. And, um, And he's right about his talent in terms of when it wasn't his ability to run or cover ground when I when I you know when I signed him or when I played him it was his ability to dribble to dribble and take on defenders inside and out and that was that was um, the thing that, that caught me we, you know we had a lot of the history of sort of wingers doing well at the club at, at that time and we number of number of wingers who went away to England and Scotland. But James, James obviously had a, an incredible ability to dribble inside or outside, and that was that was the standout thing for me. Um, in in his uh, when, when when he played for me as a young player, he was a he was a really exciting dribbler, and that was that was uh, the ability to take people on inside outside, the ability to speed to to you know to go on the outside and deliver quality, and. Um, his number of assists were off the charts, so that was that was that's that's what I see. Thanks, guys.